What's up squad and welcome to episode 14 of X Marks the Spot, your dedicated Xbox podcast here at youtube.com forward slash installation X. I'm your host, your captain, your one man band Sykes and I hope that whoever you are, wherever you are and whatever you may be doing, you are safe and well. Don't forget if you enjoy this video podcast, please make sure you leave a like, head over to installation X and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications of future uploads to support the channel and to see more Xbox content. If you want to get involved in the show, then let me know your thoughts in the comment section. You can also send me your questions via email to xmarksaspotpodcast at gmail.com or tweet me at underscore installation underscore x with the best questions to be added to the show. And a reminder, if you need some crewmates to aid you in your gaming experiences, then you can send me your gamer tag and a description of the games that you play and the people you are looking for to xmarksaspotpodcast at gmail.com and I'll read them out at the start of the show using our calling all crewmates section. We're finally here, squad. We finally made it to July, believe it or not, in probably the roughest six months people have probably ever had, or at least the last four months, um, we finally arrived at the July showcase, um, which is what the the majority of this uh, episode is going to be about. We're going to be talking about what we could likely see at the July showcase, but before we get there, um, a quick few updates for you. Again, a massive thank you to everyone who helped me get to 1,000 subscribers, massive thank you once again. Um, my evolution of Xbox from 2013 to 2020 video is now live. That was kind of uh, triggered by an article that we're going to see, or I'm going to hear it talk to you about, from um, Phil Spencer over on Xbox Wire in a minute. Um, and basically it's a kind of a look down memory lane and kind of looking back at the highs and lows of the last seven years for Xbox. Um, I personally think it's the best video that I've actually ever made, so I'm very proud of it. So if you want to have uh, a look at that and you haven't checked that out yet, then go check that out. I'm really, really proud of that video. Let me know your thoughts on that one. Um, with regards to the Xbox Showcase, I'm going to be doing, like I did with the Ubi Showcase and the um, Inside Xbox episode from May, I'm going to be doing my... I'm not going to be live streaming uh, the, the Showcase because I don't have the capabilities to live stream at the moment, but hopefully that will change in the next couple of months as I look to get my hold of my PC. Very excited. Um, but I will be uploading my live reactions of the show. Um, thankfully, it's actually an, at a nice time here in the UK. It's at 5pm, which is quite good. So I'm going to have plenty of time after the show finishes to get my um, live reactions out for you. Hopefully there'll be some good stuff, some, some big pops of things we're not expecting to see. And I will then be doing a full breakdown of the, all the announcements that come out of the weekend. I'm probably going to break it up into lots of little videos to kind of focus on a couple of the big games that we get to see. And they will likely... It's my wife's birthday on Friday, so I won't be uploading on Friday because it's her day, and I'm going to be a good husband. Um, but over the weekend, um, you'll hopefully see some videos of those uh, updates rolling out over the week. And not to mention it is also going to be Sea of Thieves update week. That's coming tomorrow. Um, I'm a bit late today, um, late this week, because my wife was a bit ill. Um, on the Monday, so this is uploading on Tuesday instead of Monday as it normally would be. But Sea of Thieves update, Ash and Winds is dropping on Wednesday, so I'm going to have to try and cover that as well. So it's a mental week, but we'll get right into it. Um, Xbox Treasure Chest of News has more items this week. We have five items this week. And number one, the July showcase finally arrives on July 23rd, this Thursday. Cannot wait, cannot wait. Um, so what I thought I'd do is everyone's going out there and they're putting out their kind of predictions and previews. And I'm, I'm just basically going to break it down studio by studio. We're going to go through every uh, first party studio that is now part of Xbox Game Studios. All Well, there's 15 if you include Xbox Game Publishing, but I'm not really going to talk about them because they're kind of their own entity in a way. I'm going to talk about the 14 main studios. And we're going to talk about what we could expect from them. Some things are really obvious. Some things are a bit up in the air. No official announcements yet. And we're also going to talk about what we could potentially see from third parties. And what we're, probably, what we're definitely not going to see. And we're not going to see anything about hardware. Because that was confirmed by Aaron Greenberg over on Twitter. He was kind of getting out there and putting out the wildfires that had already started coming out. About, you know, are we going to see potentially Lockhart slash the Series S? Are we going to hear about price? All that kind of stuff. It looks like we're not going to hear about any of that. Aaron Greenberg is making it very, very clear that the focus of this showcase is purely on the games. Um, likelihood is we're going to hear about more about the Series X itself, more about potentially about Lockhart and Series S and the prices of those consoles and the services and the subscriptions and all that kind of stuff. That is going to come in later in August. So we're going to go through, we're going to break down every studio and talk about what they've got to offer. 
So we're going to start with the main one and the obvious one, and that is of course 343 Industries, and 343 Industries are working on Halo Infinite. Now this is quite clearly the biggest game on the showcase. Xbox hasn't launched with a Halo game since Halo CE back with the original Xbox. Um, this is a massive game for not only the Series X and for Microsoft, but it's also a massive game for 343 and for Halo, because... 343, again, as we've talked about numerous times on the show and in other videos, they've had their problems with Halo in the past. Halo 5 was very divisive. Um, it did some good things, but it did also a lot of bad things and things that didn't really hit well with fans. And what we're getting from them at the moment through the trailers that we had at E3 2018 and 2019 and with the latest teasers is they're moving back towards a classic art style, definitely. But the question now is, are they going to move back to more of a classic gameplay um, mechanics? Are they going to move back to potentially no sprint? Are they going to move back to smaller multiplayer maps? Are they going to move back to stuff like dual wielding and all this kind of stuff? And a lot of people have been speculating about whether they could be going back to what Halo 3 was like before Bungie really started messing around with their own formula, really, um, with Halo Reach. Um, how far back are they going to go? Are they going to blend the 343 era stuff with the Bungie era stuff? Like... A lot of questions remain about this game, especially about the gameplay, and it is officially confirmed that we are going to see the first look at the campaign. Um, now, whether we're going to get anything about multiplayer on the show, we don't know. Nothing's been confirmed yet. They might be surprising us with that. My likely theory is that we're, we're going to get a main focus on the campaign, because I think the campaign is going to be radically different to anything that we've seen before. Talks of open world areas... Um, talks about multiple quests, even side quests, zoned open worlds. There's been lots of theories going around about Halo Infinite. So I'm thinking they're going to take a big chunk of the, the time to talk about how the campaign is going to differ um, from previous campaigns, but how it's also going to be rooted in that core Halo gameplay experience. And then they're going to come back later, maybe with a multiplayer beta, maybe with an even an independent Halo multiplayer showcase, where they're going to talk us through all the things that they're doing with the multiplayer. Because... I think for a lot of people, my perspective from the campaign really is fix the story. Like, take time, give us more interactions that are meaningful with the actual characters so we can actually care about them and fix the story. That's all I really care about for campaign perspective. I want it to be good. I've been going back and playing Halo 3 on the MCC now since Halo 3 um, launched on PC. I've gotten back into Halo 3 again. And I went back and played that campaign. I'm like, this is a great campaign. And I've played these missions over and over and over again because they're great, because they're replayable, because they're fun. I don't really see that with the 343 games, so it's going to be interesting whether we're going to get anything from that. Um, but multiplayer, I could presume, is going to become a beta later on. So, But we're definitely going to get a campaign reveal, that is certain. And that is likely going to be either the front end of the show, we're going to get that straight away, or they might save that for the end of the show. But it's going to, I would imagine most people's shows have been running around about an hour, so... I think Sony's might have gone a little longer, but UB Forward was an hour. Um, the May 20, uh, the May 2020 showcase was less than an hour. Um, it was more about half an hour. So um, this is probably going to be about an hour. So you're going to see probably a good 15 minutes of this, if not more, um, on Halo Infinite, which is very exciting. Uh, then we're going to go to Rare. Now, Rare are working currently on Everwild. That was teased back at XO19. Uh, it's kind of a... Well, we don't really know what it is, to be honest. It it's, looks like a very much a co-op game again, but with more RPG world exploration elements. Um, it's got a very similar art style to Sea of Thieves, but it's different. Um, but it's kind of got the same colour palette, really. Um, we, I want to see what this game's going to play like. And I'm hoping we're going to get to see more of the actual gameplay of the game. Like, how are you going to be interacting with the other players? How are you going to be interacting with the world? And more importantly, how are you going to be interacting with the wildlife that's in the game? Because... It seemed to be teasing very, very heavily a relationship between the player and the character that you're playing as and the wildlife that exists within this world. Um, almost a bit like how Avatar was, the movie, where you had um, kind of the, the avatars themselves were integrating themselves through their neural pathways, I think it was, I'm, I might be spouting rubbish, with the actual animals and connecting with them on a, on a real, like, um, lev uh, a biological level. And whether we see anything like that, I don't know. Um, but it seems to be this is going to be more of an RPG co-op game than it is Sea of Thieves is, which is going to be more of a, which is, clear, which is an MMO. Um, now, speaking of Sea of Thieves, I probably expect Sea of Thieves to be there. Sea of Thieves is going from strength to strength. They're probably going to talk us through maybe another big update that we could be getting later on in the year. And the other thing that we're working on is, well, they've kind of, they're working in collaboration with Battletoads. Um, it's their IP. 
whether we're going to see any more about Battletoads, it's kind of gone away for a little bit and been a bit quiet. But Forever Wild, I think it's safe to say that we're going to see more of it. Um, hopefully, I don't know if we're going to get a gameplay demo. Um, it might be a bit early for that, but we're going to see probably some, hopefully more actual like a gameplay trailer and get an idea of how the game is going to play. Sea of Thieves, don't forget, released back in 2018. They've obviously got a core group that's working on Sea of Thieves, but they would have had a larger group now working on Ever Wild. So that game's not going to be too far away. Um, so looking forward to that. And the other game we have definitely confirmed is obviously with Ninja Theory, which is Hellblade 2. Um, Senwa's Saga, that was teased back, or they're calling it Senwa's Saga Hellblade 2. I don't like that. I'm calling it Hellblade 2 Senwa's Saga. If I'm wrong, fine. But I like saying that better, so I'm going to say it that way. Uh, this was teased with an absolute awesome trailer alongside the Series X at the Game Awards in 2019. Um, hopefully we're going to get, again, like a bit like Everwild, we're going to get a better look at what this game's going to be. Um, hopefully we're going to get an idea of what's going to be in the game, um, from the lore, from the puzzles. Because don't forget, Hellblade Senwa's Sacrifice had a lot of puzzling in there, around, obviously, um, Senwa's Psychosis. But it had a lot in there, in terms of puzzles, in terms of varying um, environmental factors that you had to integrate with um, and interact with. So it's going to be interesting what how they're going to take that to the next level. Obviously, you would expect with Hellblade 2, the biggest thing that I think held Hellblade 1 back was its combat. It was very simple hack and slash combat. Um, so I'd like to see, hopefully, maybe a deeper level of combat within this game and to see how much Senwa's changed because Senwa is very much a... She's an incredibly unique character that I don't really think is in video games at the moment. She's just one of a kind. So it's going to be interesting to see how she has changed from Sacrifice to Saga and how, you know, a lot of people have been thinking about the, the idea of this game is going to follow, uh, she's going to go after her father and try and get revenge for, um, ha of revenge on the Northmen who uh, killed her pit tribe up in the Orkney Islands. So it's going to be interesting to see what the narrative of this game is going to be and hopefully we'll get some more clues, what the gameplay is going to be, hopefully we'll get some more clues there. I think it's too early to get a demo um, again, this was, Phil Spencer made it very, very clear at the Game Awards that Hellblade 2 is in early development. Um, but importantly, hopefully, they can get something that's running in engine and we can actually get to, say, turn around to a lot of the doubters and say, yes, this game does look that good. It looks as good as you showed us in 2019 at the Game Awards. This is generally the look of the game. This looks amazing because there's a lot of doubters out there. So... Beyond those three, again, we're going to get pro we're going to get a proper demo for Halo Infinite. We're likely to get maybe gameplay trailers potentially from Hellblade Two and from Everward. But beyond that, we don't really have much else to go on. A lot of it is speculation. Now, a lot of it, we can make some fair assumptions based on the history of these um, developers. But a lot of it is a bit of a guessing game. So, two that are definitely happening, but whether we're going to see them on the same show is Turn Ten. They're definitely working on the next Forza Motorsport. People are talking it's going to be a straight-up Forza Motorsport 8. A lot of people are talking it could potentially go down a games of service, similar to what um, Pro Evolution Soccer have done recently, where they're kind of they put out the game, but their 2021 version, they're not going to um, release it as a whole new game. It's going to be like a season update that you pay for at just a lower price. So whether we're going to get a... A, a, a reboot of Forza Motorsport instead of going on to having multiple like you know eight, nine, ten. Maybe whether it's just going to be the one game that's then going to get constantly updated with with paid updates um, or not. There's a lot of rumours going around about that, but they're definitely walking, work, walking, working on the new Forza Motorsport. And obviously, the thing about Forza Motorsport is that we should have had Forza Motorsport last year. Um, because it's always alternated between Motorsport and Horizon, Motorsport and Horizon with the Forza franchises. And last year, Turn 10 took the year off. Um, we should have had Forza Motorsport last year, we didn't get it. So they're clearly saving it for the Series X, and they're clearly trying to show us what the racing games that they've got are going to be capable of on the Series X. And a lot of people would presume like Forza has been quite a staple, staple of the launch of new hardware for Microsoft for the last seven years, because... Forza 5 um, launched on uh, the Xbox One, and then Forza 7 was one of the showcase games for the Series F, sorry, not for the Series X, the Xbox One X. I oh, know, don't don't try and say you're getting confused already, Sykes, I'm not. For the Xbox One X, we had Forza Motorsport 7. 
Um, so you would make a fair assumption that we could be getting Forza Motorsport 8. Now, Phil Spencer's l recently talked about having a launch window of games, not necessarily a launch day of games. And because they've now got Game Pass, they could just release anything in Game Pass day one. Talking about maybe stretching that launch lineup out and giving it time to breathe. So f Halo Infinite is clearly the launch game. So whether we're going to get Forza Motorsport maybe in December, if the console's going to launch in November, maybe we get it early January. But I presume that game is not too far away. Usually with Forza games, we get them. They drop at E3, they announce them, they show them the whole demo, the whole fancy car that works, and then they're out a couple of months later. I wouldn't be surprised if this is the same for Forza Motorsport 8, or whatever the next iteration of Forza Motorsport is. And then we get to Playground Games. Now, Playground Games is a bit quirky now. Because their racing team is definitely working on Forza Horizon 5. Forza Horizon 4 was one of the best exclusives of this generation by far. Um, it's one of the best, if not the best, open world racer ever, in my opinion, and a lot of other people's opinions as well. So they're definitely working on that. And Forza Horizon 5... Now, with Forza Horizon 5 and Forza Motorsport, are you both going to have them on the same show? Probably not. So I would expect maybe Forza Horizon 5 to take a backseat this year to then be revealed later next year. Um... Around E3 time, hopefully, if E3 is back up and running properly next year. That's, you know, hopefully that will happen. So, Forza Horizon 5, I think they'll save that one for next year. But then we've, of course, got the mystery of... Well, you could say mystery or the worst-kept secret in gaming with the RPG team. So, don't forget, folks, that when Microsoft acquired uh, Playground Games, they greenlit a whole new second team. So, this isn't a splinter team. This is a whole team on its own. And they are working on an RPG. And for and Playground Games openly call it the RPG team um, when they hire new people um, and they announce it on their site and on Twitter or whatnot. A lot of people believe they are working on a Fable reboot. Not a Fable sequel, but a complete reboot of the franchise. Taking the Fable IP and taking the core principles of what made Fable great and reimagining them for 2020 and completely spinning this franchise into something new. Similar to what kind of um, id software did with Doom, you know, it has very, it's very similar to the originals, obviously with the gunplay, and obviously it's much, much further updated. But they've also gone deeper in terms of the lore of the of the games and whatnot. Fable's going to get rebooted in some form, but a lot of people are thinking this is going to be playground, and this is, is seemingly the worst kept secret in gaming. So hopefully we will get some official announcement. I still think this game is a little bit away away. Because don't forget, the acquisition happened in 2018. You've got to build the team, then you've got to start pre-production, then you've got to start really developing the game. I still think it's a way off. Like We're not going to get it next year. We might, we're probably going to get it in 2022. But, again, like I said previously, now is the time to show us what you've got. So now, if, if it's going to happen, now is the time to show us. So I think we're going to get some reveal from the RPG team on what they're working on. But I think that's what we're going to get from them. Uh, we've got Mo Yang. Mo Yang are obviously going to be c continuing to work on Minecraft. We're going to see what future updates they've got. Obviously, they've just released a new one, Never Update. Uh, but we might get some ideas of what they're working on next. And, of course, Minecraft Dungeons. Um, I think Minecraft Dungeons is brilliant. And I think it's it was a, a game that was a a really good, nice game that we needed this year. Um, a lot of fun. Very creative. Um, still in keeping with what makes Minecraft Minecraft. Um, so whether we're going to get any potential updates to Minecraft Dungeons, again, whether this is just going to be a bit like a Games for Service where it's just going to consistently get updated with new levels, um, the jungle updates obviously coming in as well, uh, that's dropped already, um, or oh, the jungle, is it Jungle Awakens I think it's called? I've not played it yet, I've not had a chance to get back to it, but yeah, hopefully we'll see hear, hear more about Minecraft Dungeons if it's going to get more support and obviously more Minecraft stuff. Then we get into the Coalition, now the Coalition... They're clearly working on Gears 6. We might hear more from them about Gears Tactics and that the console release for Gears Tactics. Now, Gears 6 is a way away. Um, Gears 5 dropped last year in October and was brilliant. I absolutely love the game. Multiplayer needs a bit more innovating, in my honesty. Um, I think it's a bit too safe. But the campaign was amazing. It's one of the best campaigns on Xbox One and one of the best campaigns of any Xbox exclusive ever, in my opinion. It was freaking amazing. Um, whether we get a Gear 6 teaser or not, not sure. I think it's a bit early. Um, they might try and save that for next year um, for a bit of a pop. You know, Gears has very religiously, since um, the Coalition took over, released on a three-year dev cycle, similar to what Halo was doing. Um, and their engine seems to be way further on than what Halo's was. Um, because Gears 4 released in, in 2016, Gears 5 obviously released last year in 2019, 
So we would assume that this won't be around until 2022. That's whether COVID-19 is screwed up with the development cycles a little bit and it might even take a bit longer. But I have to wipe my foot. Um, but um, yeah, we, if we're going to get anything from the coalition, it's going to be a teaser. Definitely a teaser. Um, and then we move in to speculation territory. Um, World's Edge, they're working on Age of Empires 4. That's, um, that's been made official. Um, but in terms of how that's going to work with PC release and console release, we're not sure. Probably going to hear more of that. Um, but again, we're, we're going we're gonna to see more of it, but it depends on how far away, how close that game is. I'm not quite sure. Age of Empires isn't really. I'm up to speed with it. I did play Age of Empires 2 Remastered, I think it was, at XO19. It was really good. I had fun. I had to get the guy to explain it to me because I had never actually played Age of Empires before. But once I got the hang of it, it was really fun. Uh, so they're working on that. Then we've got the initiative. Now, this is the big kind of rumour mill get uh, studio, really, because no one knows what they're working on. Nothing. Like, if you want to give Xbox credit and Microsoft credit where other companies have failed, they've really kept a lot of their, like, what the next games are for a lot of these studios under wraps really, really well. They've kept everything a lid on things. Obviously, we've still got two days left. It could change, but... A lot of people are thinking we're going to get a perfect dark game, um, which the franchise has been dormant for 15 years, so it, potentially it's going to be a complete reimagining of perfect dark, like how we're doing with Fable. But there's just part of me that thinks this is a little bit of a red herring. Like, I'm not sure whether this is actually the case. I would like them to be working on something completely new. I want a completely new IP. Now, I like the idea of bringing back older franchises and reimagining them like Fable would be great. But I'm, I'm personally not, like, really itching for a new Perfect Dark. So I'm hoping they're doing something completely new. But I think it's 50-50 at this point. We're either going to get a Perfect Dark game that a lot of people have thought about and it's going to be reimagined and whatnot. Or we're going to get something completely different. Um, at this point, we have no idea. But whatever it is, I still think it's going to be early. We might get a reveal trailer or a teaser. Maybe even a gameplay trailer. But I don't think we're going to get anything solid for the game for quite a while. Uh, then we get into Obsidian. So Obsidian are definitely working on a new RPG, and this is likely to come from the Pillars of Eternity team. Uh, Outer Worlds released in October, so that team is going to be working on potentially an Outer Worlds 2 or maybe a new IP altogether. I hope, Hopefully we get an Outer Worlds 2, because Outer Worlds was great. Um, I still need to finish it, but what I played of it I really, really loved. So the Pillars of, Pillars of Eternity team is probably working on a new RPG. Then we've also got Grounded as well. So Grounded is going to be launching in a game preview, I think on Friday. I think it was... July 24th, um, so hopefully we get to have our, get our hands on that, um, which will be really good, we'll probably hear more about that as well, um, I have no idea what this could be, again, it's probably going to be early, we might, we're going to get a reveal trailer, we're going to get a potentially even maybe a gameplay trailer, depends on how far along the game is, but they're definitely working on an RPG, this is what, this is the reason why these guys were bought and acquired, because they are the, they are a great RPG studio, and Xbox needs more exclusive RPGs, because I don't have enough, if any. So that's Obsidian, again, another mystery. Now, Undead Labs, uh, they are definitely likely to be working on State of Decay 3. Uh, State of Decay 2 was launched back in 2018, so now would be a good time to hear about the next one, um, especially if they could hit, like, three years. Um, that would be good. So we can probably expect State of Decay 3 next year. And I, I haven't heard anything or seen anything that suggests they're working on anything other than a, than a State of Decay 3 and then seeing what they do after that would be interesting, whether they're going to stay as the zombie kind of um, developer, or whether they're going to venture into something different, who knows. Um, and then obviously we've got Compulsion Games as well. Now, Compulsion Games were kind of the, not the weirdest acquisition, but they were, they were the most surprising one, because they were kind of like, hmm, okay, Compulsion Games, cool. They obviously launched We Happy Few. Uh, I thought it was a good premise, had a few problems with it, a bit buggy. Um, but again, that launched back in 2018, um, so, interesting to see whether they're going to do a sequel to We Happy Few, whether Microsoft bought them for that IP, or whether they're giving them the freedom to try something completely new, completely different. Um, interested about that one. Again, no word on anything, really, from them at all. They've been very, very quiet. And then, In Exile, they're going to be working on a new RPG as well. They're, keep, they're keeping them very... In, in Exile and Obsidian have worked together in the past, apparently, but In Exile being completely kept as their own team. They're obviously gearing up for the release of Wastelands 3. I got to play that at XO19 as well on PC. Really good, apart from I'm rubbish on mouse and keyboard, but I really enjoyed it again. Another nice game. Um, 
that's obviously gearing up. They're releasing lots of bits on their YouTube channel, so go check that out because it's quite fun. Um, they're doing some really good, nice dev talks, actually. It's really good to see them kind of explaining things the way they are. It's really, really refreshing. Um, again, we don't really know much. And this is really exciting. There's so many studios that we don't... It doesn't help me now because I can't really talk about much, but we don't really know what's coming from these guys. Um, and then finally, we've got Double Fine, the newest studio that were acquired last year. They are gearing up to the release of Psychonauts 2, so we're probably going to see more of that. And beyond that, I don't know. I don't know. I think maybe we're not going to hear anything about them from them from this uh, showcase. It's probably a bit too early. Uh, but they could potentially be already working on something uh, beyond Psychonauts 2 and seeing what they're going to go beyond that. But I think it's a bit early for them. So probably what we're going to see from them is Psychonauts 2, which is exciting. And then I've got them in here, further studio acquisition. So I remember, I think I covered this on the show uh, a while ago. Bloober Team um, out of Poland have been put up for sale. Uh, they, they've, they've basically kind of put themselves up on the market for, a, for an acquisition. And Bloober Team worked on Blair Witch, and they're also working on The Medium, which is um, coming exclusively to console on Game Pass. It's launching in Game Pass. So there's a lot of speculation whether Bloober Team could potentially be announced as the 16th studio and they can be fully acquired. And obviously there's been a lot of rumour around uh, Warner Bros and what's happening with them and their studios, especially uh, NeverRealm, Monolith, um, Rocksteady. Again, I think this is very, very unlikely that we're going to hear anything from Microsoft on any potential Warner Bros acquisition. I think it's way too early. We might get I mean, if they've managed to hash out some form of deal, we might hear something. But I think this is way, way, way early. There's still a lot that they need to figure out in terms of licenses, especially with that deal with AT&T. So I don't think we're going to hear anything from them. My out of left field absolute dream prediction is, as it always is, every single year, Sunset Overdrive 2. Just saying. Sunset Overdrive 2, I did a Will It Happen uh, episode on this a while back now. Did really well. I think it's on about 12,000 views now. So thank you for that. Anyone who's watched that. Go check that out. I'll leave it linked above. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of issues that could potentially hold this back. I would still love this game. Sunset Overdrive for me. And I mentioned it in the Evolution of Xbox video. Again you can go check that out. Was um, I think it's been one of the best. If not the best exclusives from Xbox. This whole generation. Obviously created by Insomniac. But the problem is Insomniac. Long, long story short, Insomniac are now acquired by Sony, so I guess based on that, Sony have the rights for Sunset Overdrive, but at the same time, Microsoft have the publishing rights for Sunset Overdrive on console, so technically they can't publish Sunset Overdrive on the PlayStation 4 or on the PlayStation 5, so there's lots of crisscrossing problems with this, um, but that is my dream, and of course, we are likely to hear probably some more Second party deals and third party deals as well. But what they could be... A lot of people are talking about Elden Ring uh, showing back up again. That would be cool um, from From Software. Uh, we might see more from Ubisoft potentially, but I think we won't because they got pretty much most of their big ones like Watch Dogs Legion, um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla out on UB Forward. We might see some more stuff from EA. Maybe Bethesda might make an appearance. Um, who knows? Who knows? We could get anything there. So there you go. That's all my thoughts on... Um, the Xbox Showcase, hopefully it will be absolutely amazing. Again, I think this is well balanced because there's lots of things we do know about and that we're excited to see more of, but there's lots of things we don't know about and we're excited to see generally what they're going to show, which is great. Fingers crossed this is going to be an absolute fire show. Uh, right, moving into item number two, I'll try and rattle through the next couple of items quite quickly. Item number two, you are the future of gaming from Phil Spencer over on Xbox Wire. This is the article that really triggered my evolution of Xbox video. Um, I want to talk about it here because I think it's a great article. I've kind of not mentioned everything in the article, but I've taken the main important bit. So what Phil Spencer is essentially talking about is how they are making it very, very clear that you, the gamer, and the consumer are at the center of the next-gen Xbox strategy, and he wants to make commitments to you that he wants to share. So I'll quickly roll through these for you. These are all direct quotes from the article, by the way. Again, all my sources, I'll leave links in the description. So, you will always be welcome. We are building Xbox for you. Players from all walks of life everywhere in the world. We want to make your Xbox community safe, accessible and welcoming. A place where you can have fun. As we say in our community standards, harassment and hate takes many forms, but none have a home on Xbox. Should you feel others are behaving in ways that violate the standards, our safety team will investigate your report and support you 24-7-365 around the globe. 
And we continue to accelerate new technology to reduce hate speech and toxicity, giving you the tools to create the safe gaming community you want to play in. In addition to tools, we commit to bringing more diverse stories to Xbox for you to enjoy. We are empowering creators of diverse backgrounds to develop new stories, advocating for an authentic and respectful representation in games, and championing accessibility so that, you, uh, so that all can play. Additionally, more than 300,000 Xbox ambassadors give their time and passion to Xbox, to making Xbox the best place to play, and we invite all players to join us on that mission. We still have so much more work to do, and will not stop until everyone who feels welcome, heard, and valued. Basically, guys, don't be a dick. And if you're going to have a moment where you're just going to let it out, mute your mic, let it just get it out of your system in your own room or in your own um, study or attic or wherever you are, let it out and then go back to just being a decent human being online. Pretty straightforward. Don't be a dick. Uh, your games will look and play best on Xbox Series X. Xbox Series X is designed to deliver a new level of fidelity, feel, performance and precision never seen before in console gaming. All games will look and play online best on xbox series x whether they come from our 15 xbox game studios like halo infinite or from our world-class publisher and developer partners packing over 12 teraflops of gpu power including new technologies like hardware accelerated direct x tra ray tracing and variable rate shading and with four times the processing power of an xbox one x xbox series x enables developers to provide you with the transformative gaming experiences through richer more dynamic living worlds more realistic ai and animations and support for higher frame rates including support for up to 120 frames per second. Hopefully developers will actually take that up. And stop cowering out at 30. Just saying. That's my thoughts. <laughs> that's not Phil Spencer. That's me. Xbox Series X also enables you to spend time, less time waiting. And more time playing. As it virtually eliminates load times. With the 40 times boost in IO throughout throughput. From last generation. With our custom generation SSD. And Xbox Velocity architecture. Nearly every aspect of playing games is improved. Game worlds are larger. More dynamic and load in a flash. And fast travel is just that, fast. The Xbox Velocity architecture also powers new platform capabilities like Quick Resume, which enables you to seamlessly switch between multiple titles and resume instantly from where you last left off without waiting through long loading screens. Right now, Xbox Series X is in the hands of our 15 Xbox Game Studio teams and thousands of third-party developers, empowering them to create a new generation of blockbuster games for you to enjoy. You play new games day one with Xbox Game Pass. All Xbox Game Pass Studio titles launch in Xbox Game Pass. Sorry, all Xbox Game Studios titles launch into Xbox Game Pass the same day as their global release. So you decide whether to purchase each game separately or play them all with your Xbox Game Pass membership. Xbox Game Studios franchises that will launch into Game Pass day one of their release include Halo, Forza, Age of Empires, Gears of War, Minecraft, Hellblade, The Outer Worlds, Psychonauts, Microsoft Flight Simulator, State of Decay, Wasteland, Minecraft Dungeons, and Sea of Thieves and more new franchises in early development. So when Halo Infinite launches, you and your friends can decide whether to purchase the game or play it with your Xbox Game Pass subscription. You won't be forced into the next generation. We want every Xbox player to play all their new games from Xbox Game Studios. That's why Xbox Game Studios titles we release in the next couple of years like Halo Infinite will be available and play great on Xbox Series X and Xbox One. We won't force you to upgrade to Xbox Series X at launch to play Xbox exclusives. Your games will not be left behind thanks to backwards compatibility. You will be able to play four generations of games on Xbox Series X on day one. That makes it the largest launch lineup for any new console ever. With thousands of games to play, our backwards compatibility engineers have spent years dividing innovative ways for modern, next-gen technology to make the games library you're building today even better, at no additional cost, and with no work from developers. It's our intent for all Xbox One games that do not require Kinect to play on Xbox Series X at launch of the console. And because of the unprecedented power of Xbox Series X, most of your favourite games will load faster and look and perform many times better on the new console. Your Xbox One's gaming sorry, your Xbox One gaming accessories come into the future with you too. The Xbox Elite controller and Xbox Adaptive controller all work on the Series X, so don't have so you don't have to purchase new controllers. We believe that your investments in gaming should move with you into the next generation. That also includes Bluetooth controllers. I believe they are moving forward as well. Um, you can buy games once at no added cost. With our, smart, with our new smart delivery technology, you don't need to buy the, next, the same game twice. Once for the current generation and once for the next generation. You always have the best available version of supported games on whatever Xbox console you are always on at no additional cost. If you own a title that supports smart delivery like Destiny 2, Gears 5 and Halo Infinite, you automatically have access to the version that plays best on your Xbox console. 
Highly anticipated games from the world's biggest developers like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Cyberpunk 2077, Marvel's Avengers and more have already committed to supporting smart delivery and more will be announced soon. Xbox Play Anywhere digital titles also enable you to buy once and play on both Xbox consoles and Windows 10 PCs. You can choose how to jump into the next generation of gaming. We hear from you that you, that you prefer choice and value. With Xbox All Access, you can get Xbox Series X and Xbox Game Pass Ultimate for a low monthly price with no upfront costs, no finance charges and no hidden fees. You get to enjoy an instant library of over 100 high quality games, join friends with on online multiplayer and experience new Xbox Game Studios titles the day they release, including Halo Infinite on the fastest, most powerful Xbox ever. You are in control of a healthy and balanced gaming lifestyle. If you are a parent, guardian or caregiver, the new Xbox Family Settings app preview for iOS and Android provides a simple and convenient way to create child accounts, customise family settings and ensure that your kids have access to gaming that you feel is appropriate. And finally, you will get more from your Game Pass Ultimate membership. Finally today, we're announcing that this September in supported countries, we're bringing Xbox Game Pass and Project X Cloud together at no additional cost for Xbox Game Pass Ultimate members. That's me! With Cloud Gaming in Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, you will be able to play over 100 Xbox Game Pass titles on your phone or tablet. And because Xbox Live connects across devices, you can play along with the other with the nearly 100 million Xbox Live players around the world. So when Halo Infinite launches, you and your friends can play together and immerse yourselves in the Halo universe as Master Chief anywhere you go and across devices. Cloud Gaming and Xbox Game Pass Ultimate means your games are no longer locked to the living room. You can connect more than ever with friends and family through gaming. And just like you do with your movie and music streaming services when Cloud Gaming launches into Xbox Game Pass, you can continue your game wherever you left off on any of your devices. Whew! I know it went on for a little bit, but I just wanted to kind of get that all out there because I think this completely encapsulates why Xbox is in such a great position, in my opinion. They have done so many good things that are so pro-consumer. Backwards compatibility, bring your accessories forward. Xbox All Access, Xbox Game Pass. There's so many great things that Microsoft are doing right now that I believe deserve a lot more credit than they're getting for. So that's why I wanted to explain all that. All of that is awesome. All of that is brilliant. I just want to get my hands on the console now. I want to be able to... I need to upgrade my phone um, because I want to get a better phone if I'm going to be playing um, games on my phone. But I'm absolutely psyched for all that. I cannot wait. So great job, Phil. Great job, Team Xbox. Hopefully it all comes together well in the fall. Item number three, 12-month Xbox Live Gold subscription has been quietly withdrawn by Microsoft. So my, this comes from um, Eurogamer, I believe. Yep. Uh, my, there's many outlets that have covered this. Uh, Microsoft has reportedly removed the option to purchase 12-month subscriptions of Xbox Live Gold across all territories in which the year-long subscription was sold. While the single-month and three-month su subscriptions remain, there is now no longer an option to save by purchasing the 12-month sub leading to speculation that the service will either be retired or refreshed for its next-gen system, the Xbox Series X, which is out later this year. In particularly, It's particularly curious timing given we recently learned Xbox Game Streaming Service xCloud will be folded into Xbox Game Pass Ultimate this September. Hashtag, it's not hashtag, <laughs> quote, <laughs> no additional cost to Xbox Game Pass Ultimate members, end quote. 100 games will be available for streaming via smartphone or tablet and more than 50 are currently in xCloud's preview program, including Halo 5, Destiny 2, Dragon Age Inquisition. Microsoft did not announce the change nor expand on why it had taken the decision to delist the 12-month option when pressed for clarification, but it did confirm that the subscription's removal was not accidental. Quote, At this time, Xbox has decided to remove the 12-month Xbox Live Gold SKU from the Microsoft Online Store. End quote. A Microsoft spokesperson told TA. Quote, Customers can still sign up for one month and three month Xbox Live subscription online through the Microsoft Store. End quote. This hints at a change that they're clearly going to make. Whether they're going to make it free or not, I doubt, because Xbox Game Pass Ultimate is included. Your Xbox Live subscription is included with Ultimate. So um, it's going to be interesting what they're going to do. Um, it's making people aware. I, I, I just transitioned my um, Xbox Live over to my Ultimate account when I needed to upgrade, and my Ultimate account's pretty awesome, and you get loads of perks as well, so why not? Uh, but yeah, watch this space for that one. Hopefully, we might, we're not going to hear more this week. We'll probably hear more about this in August. Um, item number four, this is awesome. Sea of Thieves passes 15 million players. This is from Joe Neat on Xbox Wire. It's both thrilling and humbling to share with you that Sea of Thieves has been played by more than 15 million players since our launch in March 2018. The way that the game and its community has continued to grow has been amazing to see. 
It was only in January of this year that we shared that 10 million people had played the game. We're also humbled that more people have played Sea of Thieves in the first six months of 2020 than who played in the whole of 2019, which was more than in 2018. Last month, June 2020, was also the biggest month so far for Sea of Thieves in terms of active players, with more than 3.3 million players setting sail. A contributing factor to this growth has been our recent launch on Steam. We've been blown away by the support we've seen from the Steam community, with over 1 million copies of the game having been sold so far, and the game regularly appearing in the top selling and most played game charts. On behalf of all of us at Rare, I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone who's ever played Sea of Thieves for helping to get us this far. It's a game that we love making and there's plenty more to come. See you on the seas. You're very welcome, Joe. I'm happy to have played that game. I love Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves is by far the most successful game on my channel. Um, it's a game that I will continue to make regular content with. This is great news. All the doubters out there, why would Microsoft put their IP out on PC? Now you know why. Oh, I've got an email from someone. Moving on. Uh, and lastly, just to let everyone know, the Idea Xbox launches the Summer Spotlight series. This is over on Xbox Wire. There's a series of videos from Xbox Wire and presumably on YouTube that are showcasing lots of indie games. There's a six-part series. I just wanted to give it focus. I'll leave the link in the description again, so go check those out. Right, Game Pass Gems, no major updates this week. Uh, games with Gold Hoard is a reminder that you can get FI, uh, WRC8 FIA World Rally Championship. This is still available till the 31st on Xbox One. Dunk Lords is available to the August the 15th on Xbox One. And Juju is available to the 31st on Xbox One and Xbox 360. And that finally takes us to the Xbox Store stash. I'll quickly whiz through these for you. Uh, Rock of Ages 3 Make and Break is July 21st. A competitive tower defence in arcade action rolled up with quirky Monty Python-esque humour into one giant creative game for the ages. Jump into the expansive, gut-busting story for an electric, uh, an electric adventure featuring bizarre and irreverent takes on legendary characters or for the first time, create and share your own levels to compete with friends and strangers online in real time, in a real-time mix of hectic tower defence and epic boulder racing act arcade action. Uh, Liquid Sunshine, July 21st. This is an Xbox One X enhanced title. A beautiful casual puzzle adventure platform inspired by games like Lost Vikings and Limbo. Guide a monkey, horse and a rhino through challenging puzzles and discover the roots of their relationship through a full-blown comic book backstory. Each character has several abilities and by combining their powers with one of their allies, they create a second tier of abilities. These will be necessary to get all three characters through the levels. Uh, Turok Escape from the Lost Valley, July 22nd. This is Xbox One X enhanced as well. Based on the classic Turok Son of Stone comic books characters, in Turok Escape from Lost Valley, you wake from a long sleep as Turok and adventure alongside Ander through the dangerous world of the Lost Valley as you seek to find a path home. Master the art of the knife and the bow as you encounter adorable but deadly enemies, discover a path through unique environments and choose the best weapon for the enemy in front of you. Uh, Creeks, July 22nd. The ground starts shaking, light bulbs are breaking, and something unusual is happening right behind the walls of your very room. Equipped with nothing but wit and courage, you slowly descend into a world inhabited by avian folk and deadly furniture monsters. From the creators of indie classics uh, Machinarium and Somorost comes Creeks, a new puzzle adventure game that delights the senses with its hand-painted visuals, precise animation, eerie sounds, and an electric... Ele ele oh, there's a lot of eclectic words here today. Original score from the Hidden Orchestra. Uh, rain swept July 22nd. Embark on an emotional adventure in a small town affected by a doubling, double shooting. Uh, join Detective Stone and unravel entangled threads of love, relationships and unresolved trauma in this character-driven murder mystery game. Uh, Aircraft Evolution July 22nd. An action game where you are tested with destroying enemy bases by bombarding them with your aircraft. Fight through four time periods from the era of the First World War to futuristic battles. Level up and evolve your aircraft from a wooden plane to a futuristic fighter, then refine it by increasing its armour, fuel, speed, firepower and much more. Uh, Carry in July 23rd, this is Xbox Game Pass for console and PC. A reverse horror game in which you assume the role of an amorphous creature of unknown origin. Stalk and consume those that imprisons you to spread fear and panic throughout the facility. Grow and evolve as you tear down this prison and acquire more and more devastating abilities on the path of retribution. Uh, Golf with your friends for PC is July 23rd. Uh, this is coming to Game Pass for PC, that's great. 
Why have friends if not to play golf with your friends? Nothing is out of bounds as you take on courses filled with fast-paced, exciting, simultaneous mini-golf for up to 12 players. Become a pro in the pirate ship, declare Worms Warfare on the Worms course across a variety of themed courses. Uh, drive a wedge between your friends as you trap their ball in honey, freeze it, or turn it into a cube. Uh, Allison's Diary, Rebirth is July 24th. Immerse yourself into, into this terrifying first-person horror adventure where you will have to explore and search for the truth about the night Allison killed her parents Wow, while trying to survive against the darkness. Search for the truth while exploring realistic and graphically stunning environments facing terrible enemies and scary jump scares. Really scary jump scares? I wouldn't have thought that. Uh, <laughs> escape from entities in the darkness or try to fight lighting them up with the only weapon you have, your flashlight. Max and the Book of Chaos is July 24th. A 2D arcade game, action game, with elements of run and gun and shoot em up with classic games with a strong arcade feeling. A kid who will have the destiny of the world in his hands will have will have faced this wave of disaster, save the world and free buddies. That wasn't written very well, just saying. And finally, Tannenberg, July 24th, Xbox One X Enhanced. Experience authentic First World War action with 40 player battles of, of manoeuvre on the Eastern Front, grab your rifle, ready your saber, and keep your gas mask closed as you prepare to play a part in one of the most significant conflicts in history. Whew, right, this one went on a little bit longer, guys. I do apologise for that, but I need to get everything out there. As always, if you enjoyed this video, then please make sure you leave a like, you head over to Instation X and subscribe, and you hit that bell for notifications of more Xbox content. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section on all the things that we could potentially see at the Xbox Showcase in two days. And as always, for more Xbox content, stay tuned to Installation X. Bye, guys.